Hi everybody. It's nice, nice uh, night for a walk to go get myself a bucket of coffee and uh, maybe pass out some cards, study Father's Word. I was reading a jot the other day and it was talking about feed my father's flock in Shechem. And I was considering that. I was looking into Genesis chapter 12 where it talks about Abram. And there's a lot of promises that are made there. Right. Um, talking about how through you all, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And uh, talks about blessings and curses. Go read it. But pay attention to verse 12. I just have uh, something I want to want to not bury in a hole, you know. So I'm going to give this this stuff uh, the Father's shown me. It's got nothing to do with myself. I don't know why I know this stuff. But um, what else happened in Shechem? Okay. And you know, you'll find out that Mount Gerzim, Mount Ebal was there. And then there was the Valley of Moray. And you go read about Deuteronomy um, chapter 27, 28, about Gerzim and Ebal, these two mountains. And you see that six of the tribes would have been on one mountain, six of the tribes would have been on the other mountain, okay? And the middle would have been the Ark. I'm pretty sure that's also where uh, Jacob's well is. But, but regardless... One mountain is appointed for curses and the other mountain is appointed for blessings. Now, when you look at the word Shechem, it means shoulder, neck between the shoulders or shoulder. Now, considering what these mountains represent and the fact that if you, if you break the commandments, all these curses are going to be added onto you. And if you keep them, all these blessings are going to be added onto you. Um, consider this, that unto us a uh, son is given and the government shall lay upon his shoulder. Well, look into that word in the Strong's. Right? The word his is just an addition. I mean, it comes from the word Shechem. So it could equally be translated the government shall be upon Shechem. Which makes complete sense to me because this is how it's going to be governed. You either obey and receive these blessings or you disobey and all these curses shall be added on to you. Now, the word more. Look into that. It means first rain. Former rain. Now more than that, let's consider the feet. Okay. Go to Genesis 49, verse 10. And you'll see that, talking about Judah, that a lawgiver will come between his feet. Then you read Revelations 1, 15. And you can see <clears throat> that his feet are going to be like fine brass in a furnace. And then you read Zechariah 6, verse 1. And you can see... You can see that there's two mountains of brass and from between them come the chariots. Then you read Zechariah 14, and you can see that his feet are going to be upon the Mount of Olives, which is going to be split, and a valley is going to appear. Okay? And this is during the day of the Lord, I'm pretty sure, because I, I, I think that's how Zechariah chapter 14 starts. It's talking about the day of the Lord. So now you consider Joel chapter 2. Right? Where it talks about the former and the latter rain. And by the way, when you look up the former rain, the early rain, 
you can see exactly what I just said, the word mora. So there's that. And of course, I mean, what about the key of David? <coughs> Resting upon the shoulder. I mean, it makes complete sense because, well, hey, if you don't keep the Ten Commandments, you're not going to have the key of David, right? So anyway, everybody, thanks for joining me on my walk for a little bit to go get a giant bucket of coffee. Uh... Praise Yah. I love you guys. Bye.